Alleluia, Alleluia. Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. Today, like my, well, my Catholic history, I'm starting a crusade. It's disaster piece. I don't know what episode it is, but Christian will put it on the screen now. And welcome back to Fusion YGO. So, here's what we're doing. We took Orcus, and we took Horus, which is the Yu-Gi-Oh! God archetype, and we took the Phantom Knights, and I thought, what kind of works all together? <laughs> Just slam it together, whatever. And you know what it did? Created a crusade. And I'm gonna take this crusade, this musical experiment, this knights with no bodies, this music with no conductor, and I will conduct this war as I see fit. And by that I mean we're gonna slam them together and see what happens. So, the deck profile is this video. We've got a couple of games coming up too. Stay tuned. Lads, let's get right into Orchid, Phantom Knight, Horus. This is the first draft, and I want to show it to you guys because I want to, I want you to see the thought process and kind of get an understanding of how the deck works and understand that we're going to be changing it, but it's crazy fun. It was pretty consistent. You'll see the game, the live games. It went 2-1 with it. So let's go ahead and dive right in to the build. We're playing three copies of the boy Gearsu. You have to play Gearsu at three uh, as he's one of your best normal summons. One of the things I was thinking about doing in this deck was actually cutting this to two because there's so many ways to get to it. Um, so this is a card you could cut to two. If you want to cut this down to exactly 40, you can absolutely do that uh, by cutting one of these. Uh, and that would take it from 45 to 44. I will go over the cards that I did discover could be cut. So Gearsu is the first check mark. We've got two copies of Orcus Nightmare. Um, because Harp's at one, uh, Nightmare needs to be at two. Uh, this card is really easy to get, your, get out of your hand, and opening it isn't a super detrimental thing. If you watch the live duels, you'll actually see me normal summon this once, which is hilarious. One Orcus Tarpor. Look, he's back to one. The boy has returned to us. We have, we have entered the Seraphim of the, the, the Orcus Crusade, and Harp is leading the way with its beautiful melody. Um, we are also playing one symbol skeleton because you've got to have the harmonies. And we have the Conductor's Wand to round out the Orcist Monsters. Uh, we are also playing uh, Orchestrated Babel and Orcist Crescendo. It is a very small Orcist package, but it is the perfect, perfect size to kind of go off. So that's the Orcist package. Next up, Phantom Knights. We're playing three copies of the Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. I know these two are both common and this is a secret. I'm gonna put the secret in the middle because it's shinier and I want it in the center. Waiting on the secrets, it is what it is. Uh, but this card is incredibly important in this deck. Uh, it's able to special summon itself to control a Phantom Knight. It also lets you special sub or add a Phantom Knights card from deck to hand. We're playing two copies of Torn Scales. If a Phantom Knight card is banished, you're able to summon this card out of the graveyard and you can discard a card to dump a Phantom Knight card from deck to the graveyard. Playing one copy of Ragged Gloves and one copy of Ancient Cloaks. Uh, Ancient Cloaks is a booster, but its big thing is you can banish it to add a Phantom Knight, a The Phantom Knight, and then Ragged Gloves, you banish it, and you can dump a uh, Phantom Knight's card. Two Fog Blade and one Wing. Fog Blade is the monster to gate. It's like the a searchable infinite and permanent. And then Phantom Knight's Wing, it's specifically here as a monster reborn to allow you to go into rank three plays and stuff like that, especially going for, uh, second to help you crack boards. That's gonna do with the Phantom Knight's engine. Next is the Horus. Three Imseti, uh, dub, one Duemtef, one Happy, uh, three King Sark, and that's it. It's the Horus package, it's what it always is. Two of the Bysteel Lube, uh, I only have two, but if you have three, you should play three. Uh, one Magna Hunt, one Druus Worm, one Sarnier, and one Ball Drake. It's the perfect ratio. You don't need a lot of them. You get through them pretty quickly. The only thing I would add is a third by Steel Lubellion, which is just for consistency's sake. Uh, but we are also playing one copy of Branded Regained and one copy of Branded Beast to round it out. Uh, Beast would be the third copy of Lubellion if you've got it. Um, I just didn't have it. I don't know where mine is. It is what it is, but that's the buy steals. 
As you can tell, this deck has a lot of engines crammed together. Disaster piece, what am I gonna say? Three copies of Danger, Nessie. Uh, you're playing the Danger package, package of three Nessie, one Sooch, and one Jackalope. Uh, the Jackalope and the suit and the Sooch, the Snake, and the weird deer rabbit are here because they're level threes, which is incredibly important. They're all dark, which is incredibly important. And Nessie will search these, which is really good. Finally, we're playing the three Forbidden Droplet and one Foolish Burial. This just helps break boards. Uh, it's incredibly important to be able to break a board, and these help you do it. And Foolish Burial is just really good. All right, extra deck time. We are playing two copies of Galatea, and one copy of Longirsu, and three, uh, three copies and two copies of Dingirsu. So yes, we are playing the standard Orcus lineup. Longirsu can come in clutch because it recycles two, and one of the things I found is that, like, I would often have two in the banish pile, so Longirsu came up to being able to send things and shuffle back because it doesn't have to sh send to use its effect, which is great. Uh, then we have the Phantom Knights part, which is one copy of Break Sword, one copy of Raider's Knight, one copy of Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon, one copy of Cherubini. Yes, that's very shiny, I know. I apologize. And one copy of Rusty Bardiche. It's five cards, and they all come in clutch as they'll all some be used like this is for going second this is almost this is made pretty consistently um one copy of Xyz armor torpedo this lets you draw cards and it's pretty big which can matter in simplified game states so you can make this using your level threes uh to be able to get another draw which is really helpful one copy of uh number 38 and one copy of the zombie vampire these are pretty standard to make if you see any um chorus package these two you're pretty much always gonna make when you can. And then finally is IP and access code talker. The extra deck was really solid. Like the only thing I might change is Xyz Armor Torpedo. I made it a couple of times and it did come in clutch but it also clogged me up. I think the card I would cut this for would be a Nightmare Unicorn as another IP target which I think is incredibly important and kind of is lacking. Uh, finally is the side deck. This is what I played tonight but you can adjust it for your locals. Uh, we played three copies of the Space Rock of Destiny, Dwayne the Space Rock Johnson. We played one Feather Duster and two Lightning Storm, just as board breakers. Uh, played two Talents and one Called By. This is just for like going first and um, when you want to be able to play through more interruptions because you're going to see a lot more of them in going into game two and three. Uh, three copies of Imperm and three copies of Evenly. I wanted as many board breakers in the side as I possibly could because I thought that they were a little bit more effective. That is going to do it for the Orcist Crusade. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, lads, good fun. Have luck.